Namaste. I want to talk to you about something quite confidential. As far as I know, it's not spoken directly even in the scriptures, although Ramana Maharshi hints at it. It's the secret path to liberation, to enlightenment, to freedom. Now, why is it secret? Well, because it's, like I said, not mentioned directly in the scriptures. And it's not ordinarily taught publicly by anyone that I know of anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you look on YouTube or you look in the bookstores and everybody is recommending some kind of action which means being engaged in the world through the senses. So we have people teaching yoga, which is all about how to regulate the body and this and that, and maybe subtle energies, but it's still a form of action. It's still doing. And in that uh, process, you are the doer. And then, uh, there are people recommending various sacrifices and prayers, pujas, and so on. And while these are all good, and they certainly lead to advancement and the uh, satisfaction of various desires, they will not bring you to moksha. How do we know this? Well, in the Shiva Sahasranam, the thousand names of Lord Shiva. It's mentioned that he is not attainable through rites, external rituals. And it's also mentioned that he is not attainable through the mind, through meditation. Well then, why do we do these things? They're preliminary. They are ways to clean up the body and the mind, to clean up your karma, to generate enough subha karma or good karma to uh, attract the attention of the Lord. But even by the method that I'm going to share with you today, he is not directly attainable. He's a darshi. He's not seen. He can't be seen. So then how is he attained? By his own grace, by his benedictions, by satisfying him, by performing the preliminary processes adequately. That will actually prepare us to receive that greatest benediction. So if you've been following this channel for three or four years, which I hope you have, or if you haven't, you should download the Dharmasar video guide linked in the description and go through some of the previous series. We talked about the four states of consciousness. I'm going to put up the good old chart. Here they are. The four states of consciousness, Jagrat, or external consciousness of the world through the senses, svapna, or mental consciousness, which is a source of dreams and sleep, deep sleep, or shushupti, which Ramana Maharshi described as sleeping in the lap of Brahman, and finally, turiya, the transcendental consciousness, which is the actual enlightenment, or the full perfect consciousness. So how do we reach these states? Or how do we utilize them for self-realization? It's quite certain that through pursuance of external objects and external processes, one cannot reach enlightenment. Yes, you must and you should do all kinds of religious rites according to your particular deity your Ishta Devata and your taste. 
you should do all that and you should in that way create a nice uh, stress-free physical existence for yourself. Uh -huh. Purify the body, then purify the heart through bhakti. Now, you'll notice on the chart, it says that bhakti yoga is a function of svapna consciousness or dreams. And similarly, raja yoga or meditation is a function of sushupti, deep sleep consciousness. How is this possible? Because normally in dreams and deep sleep, we're not fully aware. The explanation of this is kind of subtle. It is that all these four states of consciousness are available all the time. But they are simply turned toward different objects. For example, during our daily life, when we're in contact with so many external objects in the world, we're in or primarily we're focused on Jagrat consciousness. But at the same time, we have thoughts and especially we have desires. The mind is always predicting the future. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go there. This action will give this result and so on. So the mind is constantly dreaming because what is a desire? It's a thought about the future, a future which doesn't exist right now. That's a dream. Or what about all the different identifications and uh, names that we apply to different objects in the world? It's beginning with I, <laughs> myself, me. Huh? This is mine. This is my body, this is my mind, these are my thoughts, these are my dreams and desires, and so on. Or abstractions, such as groups. I am a citizen of such and such a country. I live in such and such a state or area on the world. Or I am a, a member of this company, and I have a job which is called such and such, and so on. These are all simply abstractions. They're names only. They're dreams. So actually, Svapna consciousness is functioning all the time, but it's just not the primary focus during our daily waking life. But then when we go to sleep at night, what happens? We lose the consciousness of the external body. That means sushupti, or nothingness, or emptiness, or just a blank consciousness, is now directed toward the body and senses and their objects. Just, I mean, it was always there. For example, in waking consciousness, we're not aware of the spiritual energy. That's because our sushupti our blankness, our unawareness, is turned towards it. Our attention of sushupti, or the object of sushupti consciousness, in a normal waking state, is the inner world. That's why we're not aware of it in ordinary life. Well, yoga changes all this, especially meditation. But even beginning with bhakti, we conjure up the image of a form of God in our mind, and we worship that image. In the beginning, maybe we have the image external, but then slowly, through repeated impressions, the image becomes internalized, and we begin dreaming about the particular form of God that we uh, prefer, according to our taste. And this is the spontaneous stage of bhakti. So this can be developed and should be developed because when it reaches maturity in great love, automatically meditation arises, dhyana. 
And this is the stage of Raja Yoga. Now in Raja Yoga, remember from the chart, it says we're looking into the Sushupti consciousness. And Sushupti is usually darkness, nothingness, emptiness, shunya. But when we are coming from a foundation of complete karma yoga and mature bhakti yoga, then Sushupti becomes alive. It becomes aware. It becomes full of light. As we discussed in the videos on Buddha's teaching, on the eight jhanas, huh? the four higher jhanas beyond normal human consciousness, one of them is nothingness or emptiness, shunyata. And in shunyata, one, uh, I'll cut to the chase, <laughs> one enters emptiness and then after a while realizes there's nothing to be seen, but I am still aware. I am still the seer. I am the one who knows. I am the knower. And like this, one becomes aware, aham brahmasmi, I am pure consciousness. Now, another secret. In the intervals or the uh, transitions between the different states of consciousness, Turiya is there. Because Turiya is the root. It is the foundation of all the other states of consciousness. So out of Turiya comes Sushupti, Svapna, and Jagrat. So when we change from one to the other, it's like walking from one room in a house to a different room, and we have to go through the hall. <laughs> and the hall is Turiya. So in the Sandhi, in the junction or the transition between stages of consciousness, we get a flash or a taste of Turiya. We should be aware of this. Now, all of these things will arise naturally to one who follows the progression of the states of consciousness and the yogas that belong to them. From karma yoga in Jagrat consciousness to bhakti yoga in svapna consciousness to raja yoga or meditation in sushupti and then finally turiya will bloom as the final uh, realization of all of them. This is enlightenment. It's not a mechanical process. It cannot be done by steps in a book. It's quite intuitive in nature. And it requires blessings from higher authorities. This is my experience. So what we're doing, for example, in the stage of bhakti, is we're bringing consciousness into the dream state. And one should also practice lucid dreaming, which is bringing consciousness into the function of dreams when we're sleeping at night. Similarly, the sushupti consciousness can also be made lucid by long practice of lucid dreaming. And then you are on the doorstep of complete enlightenment. And these are the stages that lead to the blessing that gives emancipation, liberation, or mukti. This is the goal of all spiritual life. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.